Hello, this is Alex Al, giving a video briefing to those who were unable to attend the briefing session last Thursday. Thank you for expressing interest in helping out with our research project, which we call Rogers Mapping. It's going to be a detailed, qualitative look at how shipyard workers found their jobs. It's really a first step in a very long-term project, which we call Adosa open, direct, or single agency hiring. And the concept is to have jobs for foreign workers available, listed on a, an internet portal, either employers or their Singapore licensed employment agents can put up the job ads. But more importantly, it's not just an advertising platform. The workers should be able to apply for the jobs, um, and uh, submit the documents and get the IPA and maybe even make a little bit of payment through the portal. I think we need to step back and ask ourselves what exactly is wrong with the present system. Well, as you know, there are lots and lots of workers in source countries like Bangladesh looking for work compared to the relatively few jobs in Singapore. There are a few people who know where the jobs are to be found, but otherwise this information is not openly available. These well-connected persons become recruiters or dalals, to use the local word, and they obviously will be very tempted to charge heftily for the introductions and the connections to the jobs. This of course explains why recruitment fees are as high as 20 times the monthly salary of a new worker. Open hiring means that we have as many jobs as possible listed on a portal and workers can see for themselves where the jobs are rather than rely on dalals. So I bring back the earlier slide that tells you what it is and how it's supposed to be of benefit. And the general aim is to keep the recruitment chain short and within Singapore jurisdiction. Now, Singapore law makes it an offence for employers to charge for offering jobs. Even if a Singapore licensed agency were to participate in the open platform, they too will come under Singapore law and they can only charge a maximum of two months salary for a two-year contract. Now, that is, uh, that, that's a vast improvement over the 20 months that workers currently may have to pay. And the plan is to have Odosa so comprehensive that we cut out all the other intermediaries as far as possible so that there is no reason for a worker to have to pay other parties along the chain. Of course, it's all very well to have an open platform like Odosa, but who's going to use it? Which employer is going to come aboard? Which employer is going to change the way he operates? Especially when we know that there are some employers who take kickbacks for offering jobs to foreign workers and profit handsomely from the practice. Well, it so happens that we're at a turning point in history. Global brands are increasingly concerned about reputational risk from human rights abusers and labor abusers in their supply chains. They don't want to wake up one morning to discover that they're being named and shamed by campaigners on social media, pointing out the horrible practices among their contractors and subcontractors. And so they are increasingly interested in cleaning up their own supply chains before the crisis hits. But which industries have global brands that are currently concerned about cleaning up their supply chains? Well, it so happens that the shipping industry is one. And Singapore, of course, is a major shipbuilding centre. Except that we know that the shipyards themselves don't actually hire the workers. It's the contractors in the shipyards who are the actual employers. And quite a lot of them engage in unethical practices or allow unethical practices in the recruitment of their labour force. Well, the hope is that as the global brands, the petrochemical companies and the banks and investors come alive to the problem 
of dirty supply chains. They might put pressure on the shipyards, who in turn would put pressure on the contractors to clean up the practices and to prefer open direct hiring. So the boundaries of this research exercise would be shipyard workers and, to keep things simple, Bangladeshi workers. This is the end of part one. Please go to part two.